Hey everybody, I'm Louise from Wildflower Will and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for watching. I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who has been subscribing and commenting. It's been so fun to see our community of knitters grow. So this is a new episode of New Start Monday Knits. This is where I'm going to show you what I've been working on last week and what the new two balls are that I have either picked out of my stash or gone out yarn shopping and what I'm going to start knitting this week. Always start off with a finished dishcloth. I showed you this started last week. <laughs> I guess I'm totally not completely finished because I have not woven in my ends. Oh well. It is an almost finish. Anyways, it is the herringbone stitch. Last week I showed you the blue and white dishcloth that I had done in the herringbone and I had striped it and just the different weights of the yarns because I that blue and white one had been a mix of Bernat Handicrafter and Nipix Dishy. Nipix Dishy is just that smidgen bit smaller. The edges weren't totally even. It wasn't something I was completely happy with. So that old old one, the one from last week, isn't going to go in the Christmas box. <clears throat> Excuse me. It will just go into my kitchen and it'll be one for me. So I tried to revamp the pattern a little bit and I'm totally much happier. I just knit all in one color. There's a close up of the stitch. There's two garter stitch edge stitches on the side that I like. It's just the top that's still bugging me a little bit. Still flares out a smidge, even though I took out one of the plain knit rows. So we'll see the next time I knit this, I may either cast off with a smaller needle, but see, it just looks right there, right? It just looks like there's about three or four stitches too many. So I may just decrease on the last row before casting off, just decrease four stitches evenly across and then cast off. And hopefully it'll give us a nice straight edge without that, that little bit of a flare to it. So this is still a work in progress. Still love it, you know, and this is totally counting as my one dish cloth for this week because I'm trying to get at least one done a week. So I have at least 52 or more done by the end of the year. So it's definitely counting towards that. It is a finish. It will wash dishes. It will work in the shower. Fantastic. So I am calling it done. I am just still going to work on that cast off though, just to, just to get it the way I really like it. I'm like 98% happy with it just don't like how those edges flare on the cast off. And I know you're probably saying, Louise, it's just a dishcloth. I know. But if I was to make this a square to say, make it into an Afghan, or if I wanted to make, well, even make it a scarf if you wouldn't want the edges flaring on either end. Right? So I think it's worth all the time and effort you put into, even though I could just call this, you know, my practice, my, kind of like my gauge swatch for a larger garment. And so if you work out all these little itty bits that you're not totally happy with on your dishcloth, when you get to, you know, a bigger garment, well, even if it's a scarf or, I mean, this would be nice as a sweater. I mean, it could be nice for anything, right? And if you work out all these kinks on a dishcloth, this is what makes dishcloths perfect because even though this project isn't a hundred percent, cause oh my gosh, look at that little, what, <laughs> fold, like it's a fold, it's a bet. I don't even know what I want to call it, but right. If you can work out all those little kinks in a dishcloth, you're still getting something that is functional and usable and even giftable, you know, I mean, probably most people that would get this isn't, you know, if you're not a knitter, you're not even going to, you, you'll look at this and think it's absolutely fantastic, right? It's just, I'm just being super, super, super picky about it. So dishcloth, and again, another good reason to do dishcloths, practice your stitch pattern, practice your edge stitches, get all those things worked out, and then you can move it into a blanket, an afghan, a lap afghan, a baby afghan. Um, a scarf, a sweater, anything, right? And then you'll be like 100% totally happy with it. The other project I worked on was again, my Karen cakes, my Karen latte cakes, colorway, kissy, kissy. Isn't this such a pretty color? 
are these Karen cakes? I have to, I have to, you know, you guys know that right now I'm in love with these and you know, there it's a, an affordable yarn. I like the quality of, I mean, some people, you know, have mixed feelings about, it, but I think for as far as an acrylic goes and something that's an affordable economical yarn, this feels really nice and it is super soft. It has some nylon in it. Almost has a look of mohair. I like it. It's soft. I like it. I'm happy with it. And my mistake rib scarf pattern. Again, another perfect pattern. Super easy. Perfect to take with you. You know, pull out when you're doing your Zoom call knit night or if you're getting together outside somewhere. This is a good one. Don't have to count rows, don't have to follow a pattern. You can just look at your, your stitches on your needle and you know exactly where you are in the pattern. It's great. Easy, fun, and makes a nice wearable project. So I did not show you though. Ah, <laughs> I, I set it down before I showed you. Where is my stitch marker? I got a little bit done, but not a super, super a lot. But there's my stitch marker. So that much. But you know, every row counts. I'm that much that much closer to having it finished. I still have lots of yarn left in this ball. It has got lots of yardage. It's, I'm gonna have a really, really long skinny scarf. I wanted to, the whole idea was to get that whole ball knit into the scarf, but I don't know. I maybe won't have to knit all of it. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to show you one of the balls that I am working on for this week. This is the new start for this week for the dishcloth. Bernat Handicrafter, and the color is Tangerine. I'm pretty sure I bought this last year. This is this did come from my stash. I bought it last year. I bought some of these balls with the Tangerine and a couple balls with black to do some Halloween knitting, probably last October. And it's fall. It really, really feels like fall. The evenings are getting cool. And I found this full ball on my shelf with my dishcloth cotton. And I thought, yep, orange. Perfect fall color. So I grabbed it and I cast on. Now, I do have to say this is the second time I cast on. The first time I cast on, I thought I was going to do the rice stitch again. I did that one back in the spring. But you know what? I cast it on and I thought, no. I wasn't happy with it for a dishcloth. I'm thinking it might make a really nice scarf pattern at some time. So I pulled it out and I restarted. And I thought, you know, I thought, what do I really feel like I want to knit? And <laughs> I don't know if you can believe this or not, but honestly, what popped in my head was seed stitch. And I thought, you know, I don't want to just do regular seed stitch, which is, of course, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. I thought I'm going to do a double seed stitch. So that's exactly what I cast on. I have an even number of stitches here. And so what I am just working two rows exactly the same. So knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, all the way across, turn my work around, and then I'm working whatever I see. And um, so I've got two rows stacking. My knits and purls are stacking on top of one another for two rows. And then the next two rows, I'm alternating. So if I'm starting right here. So if I was starting here, well, if this side was facing me, those are pearls, I would, I would knit. So when I'm alternating on row three, I'm doing the opposite of what I see on the needle. And that is what is giving, making these stitch patterns offset. Anyways, it's fun. And again, and I think that this will still fit my criteria because I can very easily tell I could put a marker. I suppose I could put a marker on the row where I switch the side that I switch patterns, but I'm just going by when my tail, when I, when I turn it around right, right now, I've turned it around and my tail is here right where I'm ready to start the first stitch. I know that that is the row where I need to offset the pattern. So that's telling me that I can still read my stitches. So I don't have to count rows. I don't have to mark off um, pattern rows. I can still read my stitches. So I think this could be knit night proof, you guys. And I really like it. It kind of gives that big chunky texture. 
I like, I, I'm happy with it. As soon as I cast on like the rice stitch that I started with, I was like, hmm, I like it, but I wasn't loving it. So I thought, you know what? I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry the fact that I had quite a good chunk of it done. I thought, you know what? I'm going to pull it out because I really want to knit something that I am going to be 100% happy with. So far, with just this little bit, I'm happy with it. And I didn't put, I did not put any, any extra edge stitches on here. So we'll see if I'm happy with that once I get a little farther. But you know what? Just looking at it right now, I think I, I may, I think I'm happy with it. But who knows? I've said that before and then decided to put an extra knit stitch on there. I might or I might not. I'll think about it. I'll let you know next week when I'm done what I do. Anyways, I like it. Has anybody done a double moss stitch lately in anything? A dishcloth, a scarf? I mean, this would make a great scarf too, wouldn't it? Actually, what would you think? Would you do a sweater out of this too? I kind of like that texture enough to do a sweater. Hmm. Possibilities. So many things. I think it would be, I don't know. It would probably be a shorter list to think of what you would not knit with it because you know this would make a now I'm now I'm got myself on a roll here. I'm thinking, you know, like this would make just a nice blanket. I mean, really, it would make a nice anything, wouldn't it? I'm happy. See, sometimes that's what I think. I I don't know. I found myself this week trying to think like I was almost like trying to force myself to find something to knit. It was like, oh, okay, it's Monday. I have to I have to start something. And then the more I thought I have to start something, I was like coming up with like knitter's roadblock. I was like, ah, I couldn't quite find something. And then when I took a step back and I just thought, okay, let the yarn talk to me. And I know if some of you guys are like looking at me like, and in the comments you've said, hmm, your yarn talks to you. But I don't know, maybe it's not so much the yarn talks, but it's just, you know, it just comes to you what you want, what you want to knit, right? Anyways, I, that's what I did. I took, a, I, I pulled out that rice stitch and I just took a break and I just thought about it. And all of a sudden it was, yeah, moss stitch, seed stitch. And, um, I always interchange those terms. Do you guys, I, I think they're, I, I, I say they're the same stitch, but just two different names for the same stitch. So seed stitch, moss stitch, yeah. And I, I cast it on and I was like, yes, this is what I want to knit. This makes me feel happy. This was, this is what I want to do. Anyways, look at this. I posted a picture, hmm, what was it? A couple of weeks ago, I had to run into the dollar store to do some errands for work. And I saw this on the shelf. And I did not buy it. And I thought, wow, how exciting. Karen Cakes. There again, Karen Cakes. It's it's like, you know, they're it's like they're following me everywhere. <laughs> and I found them in the dollar store. Now, it, of course, it wasn't a dollar. This was $4 for the ball plus this pom-pom. And you guys know I love pom-poms, but these fake fur ones, not really my thing. So I don't think I would put that on there. If I was going to make a pom-pom, I would, I want to make a yarn pom-pom, but anyways, that's a, whatever. Lots of people like these, so that's okay. So $4 for this. And we, I posted a picture in the fiber friends group and people, what, a couple of people had said that they had also found them in different color. One was more of a pinky or purpley shades. This was the only colorway that they had at our, at our dollar store. And, and yeah, when I first saw it, that first trip in, I did not buy it. I had, you know, I don't know. I was probably thinking about all the stash I was organizing and decided that, yeah, I didn't really need it. And I didn't buy it. And, but I took a picture of it. <laughs> And then later on, a friend had said, nope, they were already sold out. She had been in the area, popped in to see if there's any there, and they were gone. So I guess they're a hot commodity. Anyways, I was back in picking up some items. It was my son's birthday on the weekend. So I ran into the dollar store to pick up some items. And I found this again. I thought, okay, I can't let it go again. I saw it again. It was a sign. You see something twice, 
it's a sign. You need It needs to come home with you, right? So I picked it up. There's enough yarn in here. We'll do a hat because um, at least one or two people on the Fiber Friends group had said they had made, uh, you do get a hat. And the fact that there's a pom-pom on there is a pretty good sign that it should make a hat, right? So, but I did look up the Yarn Inspirations website and I didn't see these for sale. So maybe this is something that's been discontinued and the, just some leftover stock has been sent to the to Dollarama to um, to clear out, right? Because, um, yeah, I think it said sold out or just, I don't think it said discontinued. I think it said sold out because you can put it on your wish list on the Your Inspiration site, but um, there was no price or there you can pr purchase it. Anyways. Long story short, I have one and I'm going to make a hat. So I pulled out a needle. I think I grabbed a five and a half on here, the ball band. So this is chunky cupcakes. And what is it telling me? It's a hundred grams. There's 138 yards or 126 meters. Um, the yarn is a hundred percent acrylic. It's a number five bulky. We also chatted here in the comments about this numbering system because, so see here, it says a five. Is that focused for you? And that seems really unpredictable because between fives and sixes and sevens, there's a lot of yarn weights in there. So I would, um, yeah, just look at the yarn do a gauge swatch and then go from what size needle you want to use. I love, I do have to say, I love the name of this jam session. <laughs> oh, what, oh, needle size. That's what I was looking for. It says it's six and a half millimeter. I pulled out a five and a half millimeter. I think I'm going to do my ribbing in a five and the body in a five and a half, but I will, I'll have to do a gauge and see what I think. And I'm just going to follow my super simple hat pattern and just make, well, I think so. I thought so until just now when I started to think, hmm, maybe I should do an all ribbed hat. Well, we'll see. We will see what it's going to become. Okay. I just took the ball band off and the pom pom was just, was taped to the ball band the inside. So can I just pull this? Oh, no, I can't. They have it. They have it tied on here. Can I untie? Oh, yes, I can. All right. Untied it. There we go. So because I'm assuming then that this is what you would tie this onto your hat with. Still not going to use it, though. But first thought is, is that's a very skinny little string to tie it on with. But I suppose it would work. I don't know. That might be cute. I don't know. I think it's the light blue more than anything that's going to be. Maybe if it was a darker shade or something. I don't know. The light blue is just, well, I guess it's not. Well, I was going to say it's not my favorite color, even though I guess I am wearing it right now. There. I think this whole ball looks better without that pom pom on top of it. So we'll see if we can find the center. And I'm going to cast on. I'm really excited to, to try this and see what it knits up as. There we go. My center will be in here. And it should be a pretty quick knit. So hopefully this will be done next week. And this could be, I think this will go in the Christmas box. And I think these colors, you know, in these colors, actually, I think my son will get this. I think these look like men's colors, right? The red and the blue and the gray. We'll knit this up. We'll see how, how it looks. But I'm thinking that this might go to Eric. For Christmas. So it feels nice. 
and it feels thicker than a worsted for sure. So we'll see. I'll try it with a five and a half and if I don't like it, I will adjust one way or the other. So this will be, <laughs> this will be a new start in the next day or so. So you can follow on Instagram and I will post once this gets started. So now are you ready to see my sweater? This sweater is taking me just over, wait, what, I started Thursday or Friday night last week. So just over a week, a week and a couple of days to knit. And there was a handful of days that I, well, a handful, oh, I don't know, two or three days that I probably didn't work on it really at all. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I can do this, knit another sweater and get it done in a week. That's what I would like. That I would be really happy if I could do that. So let me show you. I have a lot of ends that I had to sew in on this sweater because it is was striped. And when I divided for the front and the back, and then I had to divide the ball up cut the ball up and wind it into small balls and then knit, knit stripes that were only 10 rows wide so it matched the bottom of the sweater. I had to cut and start and cut and start and cut and start a fair amount. And then I sat and wove all of these ends in. This was my Karen Cakes anniversary ball. Now, ugh. I still have lots of yarn left. I don't know if I can show you. If you get an idea here, there's a few different colors in here. And then I have a bunch. My needle size that I used, I think I was a seven and a half millimeter that I used for the body of the sweater. I have this still here. I haven't put this away because I'm going to start another sweater next week. I already know what my new starts are going to be for next week already. So there, can you see all of those part balls? And this is what I had left over. I'm almost afraid that this is going to get all tangled. Oh, this is what I had left over from the actual cake itself. I was going to weigh it, but I mean, I definitely have lot, lots in here to do a hat. And the next sweater I'm going to do, I'm going to make the body a little bit longer. Remember this about how many videos ago? Three weeks ago? Three videos ago, probably, when I talked about doing the Karen Cakes um, anniversary ball sweater. I was worried that I wouldn't have enough yarn. And I ended up, I had... I had lots. So I could have made it a little bit longer. I'm kind of attached here. She's going to show you the ball. Like, <laughs> if you haven't seen these cakes, look at the ball band. The size of the ball band, that gives you an idea of how big the ball was. It was a thousand grams, 35.3 ounces. Now, does anybody know if these are going to be a regular item? Or was this just kind of a one-time thing? It was the Karen Cakes, I think it was their fifth anniversary. And they had these massive balls in Michael's. So what I'm really curious is, are they going to be back? Because my Michael's is sold out. They pretty much sold out. The last time I was there they had like two balls left and I really quite like them. There again, very affordable yarn with your coupon. This came to what? 34, $35 and you can get a sweater out of it. So if you're looking for something for yourself or for kids or somebody who can't wear wool, somebody who's not going to hand wash things, you can't really beat this. What I was trying to, <laughs> I was sitting here taking the ball band apart because what is on the inside of this? Oh, that's what it'll be. I didn't even pay any attention to this. 
a blanket. Double, what is this? Dub, double the stripes knit blanket. You know what? I didn't even pay any attention to that. So on the inside here is all of the, and it's saying, oh no, two balls. It's saying two balls. One ball of color A, one color, uh, one ball of color B has a stripe pattern, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and yeah. And then abbreviations and instructions. Machine, machine wash and dry. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing. Anyways, there you go. So if you want a blanket, there's a pattern in there. But I was not interested in a blanket because I'm all about sweater knitting right now. So let me show you the sweater. And I will post a picture on Instagram. I may put this on tomorrow morning and take a picture. But there it is. kind of hard and I'm this close to the camera to get the full the full effect but there it is it's done I did two inches of ribbing on the cuff so I knit this I started out in it from the bottom up in the round up until the armholes then I divided it into two I divided it into a front and a half I knit the back straight, straight across. So that's where I got into because up until the armholes, I was going round and round. And the yarn going all the way around, doing the front and back in one piece, each color section was giving me 10 rows of color. So when I divided this and I was just knitting back and forth on half the width, I had enough color that would have given me 20 rows, but I obviously I wanted my stripes to be the same size. So I just knit back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, kept an eye, counted my rows till I got to 10, cut the yarn. Then I round, so if I was doing this light gray, I still had half of that light gray in the ball. So I wound it into one of those little balls, cut it off, set it aside and picked up the beige. Knit it back and forth for 10 rows, cut the yarn, wound off the rest of the beige off my working ball, cut it, set it aside, and then I ended up having to do a couple of rows of white. Then I turned it around to the front and I started here again where I divided for the sleeve, picked up and worked back and forth. My 10 rows, cut the yarn, got the next color, joined it, worked 10 rows until I figured out how high I wanted to knit up before I started doing the bit of shoulder, not shoulder, <laughs> neck shaping. So there again, then I had to cut the yarn again because I was just working back and forth on one shoulder and made, had to make sure I was only going 10 rows. And then I came back and worked my rows on the other side and then I mattress stitched them. The only little bit of drawback on this yarn because it is so thick is when you mattress stitch anything together, even though you're still just taking one seam from each piece and sewing it together because those stitches are so big the seam is a tiny bit bulky I mean not the end of the world but definitely can tell a big difference than from just a worsted weight but there so then I so I mattress stitched the shoulders together I picked up stitches all the way around and I just, again, worked a knit one, purl one ribbing for <laughs> that far, not very far. And then I cast off in pattern, which meant I, I cast off knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. 
and then I picked up around the armhole. Now on this one, because I was knitting this without a pattern, I was just using my gauge to garment pattern and I put a little more ease into this sweater than I normally do because I wanted it just really big and oversized and I love how it fits. But because I was going oversized, I made my armhole depth a little longer, a little deeper than I probably should have. So on the next sweater, I'm going to rectify that. Now it's fine. It's, it's wearable. It looks fine. But I think the other one, I think it'll just make the fit just a little bit better, make it look a little more fitted because this is just a drop shoulder, which, you know, there is no fitting in that, right? It just is a drop shoulder, but I think, you know, kind of like how I'm on the quest for the perfect dishcloth pattern. I'm just on that quest of finding the exact measurements, you know, the width of the, the neck opening that is my ideal size. And sometimes you just have to do that a couple of times, two or three times and get everything, all the little kinks worked out. So just like I'm doing that on the herringbone stitch dishcloth, I'm doing that on this sweater. So then I can get exactly what I want down to the T and then I'll be able to replicate it on all future sweaters. So I think the next one, the next Karen, cause I have, I have two more Karen cake balls because they were selling out so quickly. I went and I bought a third one because I think I had told you in a previous video that I had bought a second one already. And then when I saw that they were like, like they were practically gone and they had, I found one of the other colorway that I wanted and it was sat, it wasn't, I thought they were totally sold out and I was kind of bummed out. I did a little walking around and then on another yarn shelf, somebody had set one down in a random shelf. So I quickly grabbed it. I thought it was meant to be here. I thought they were sold out and there was still one there. So I grabbed it. So I have two more sweaters that I can work out of this. So I think the next one, I'm going to do this again and just tweak the armhole a little bit and see how I like it. See if I like it better. Cause you never know until you have something to compare it to. That's always my way of thinking. Anyways, this is really nice on and oh my goodness, even while I was just sewing in all those ends, just having it sit in my lap, it just felt like an afghan and it just felt so nice and warm. So I think this will be nice just to throw on since the mornings and the evenings are getting really cool. I think this will be nice to have. It will be nice. It'll be great to have. And I'm going to have a couple more of them too, except one I think I'm going to make into a cardigan. This is why I didn't get a whole lot of extra knitting done other than my dishcloth and a few rows on the scarf because I got this finished in just over a week, which I think is pretty darn good for a sweater. I know I was using big yarn and big needles, but it did go really, really quick, which is obviously a super bonus to be able to get a, scarf, or a, a sweater done that quickly. And that is that. I did do some other yarn shopping, but I think I will put that into a, a separate video. I did go down to Little Red Mitten because it was local yarn shop day this past weekend, and I had not been there since March. Six months, you guys, that I had not been to Little Red Mitten or any any yarn shop other than I've been going to Michael's since they've been open. I have been to Michael's a, a few a handful of times to get some yarn but to be in an actual yarn shop it has been six months that is got to be like a world record for me I think I don't think I, I'm pretty sure I've never gone six months without being setting foot into a yarn shop and since it was local yarn shop day I thought I wanted to go down and support my friends at Little Red Mitten so I took a little few video clips so I think I'll just put those together and then I will show you what I bought because that is going to be part of next week's new start. So I kind of got two weeks worth of new starts figured out all in one week, feeling a little extra organized this week. So what is everybody else? What are you working on? 
Are you close to getting anything finished? Do you have plans to cast on anything new? Has anybody, who else is knitting from Karen Cakes? Either the latte or any of them. I mean, there's a whole variety of them. I'd love to know if you have got some thing on your needles right now. I know a few people had said they went out and they got the Karen Cakes anniversary ball. So I'd love to know if you have actually started or what you're planning, what your project is going to be. I would love to know. So let's chat in the comments. You can follow along with my progress over on Instagram. And I will see you again, definitely next week for another new start video, but hopefully once or twice in between there with my yarn shopping little trip and some more yarn organizing. So I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy knitting, everybody.